Section 15.6, triple integrals. The triple integral of f over the box b is the triple integral of b of f of x, y, z, d, v. And we define that as the limit of the triple Riemann sum of f at certain sample points, provided this uh, limit exists. So these points now are um, order triples for our sample points. And instead of d delta a for dA, we have delta v for dv as delta x, delta y, delta z, because now z is an uh, independent variable. So this is the volume of the sub box instead of a sub rectangle. So what we do is we integrate over just basically the 3D rectangle It's a box. And we break it down into lots of little sub boxes. And then we look at the volume of each of those sub boxes. And then we stack all of those up together and we end up with a triple integral. So remember, the function that we're integrating over that f is not depicted in this picture. f is quote unquote floating above this 3D rectangle. So f lies in the fourth dimension, so we cannot draw the function itself. We can only really draw the domain we're integrating over. Uh, next we have Fubini's theorem for triple integrals, the same way as we had it for double integral, so it allows us to convert our triple integral into an iterated integral. Now let's do an example. How about we evaluate the triple integral x, y, z squared dv, where b is the rectangular box given by b. So we'll say that the triple integral over r of x, y, z, oh, not r though, I'm using b this time. So say the triple integral over b of x, y, z squared dv is equal to the, well, first I'm going from 0 to 3 because that's my z. And currently I'm going from x to y to z. So then I'm going from y, which is from minus 1 to 2. And then I'm going from x, which is given as 0 to 1. And still have x, y, z squared, dx, dy, dz. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 3 of the integral from minus 1 to 2. And then we integrate x, y, z squared with respect to x. That means we hold both y and z as constants. So we just have x squared over 2 times some constant, which is yz squared. So I end up with x squared over 2. And I'll put the constant up there as well. So I'll put yz squared. And I have to evaluate this from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So I get the integral from 0 to 3 the integral from minus 1 to 2 of yz squared over 2 after I do my uh, plug in 1 and 0 and then I have to integrate with respect to y keeping z constant so I get y squared z squared over 4 evaluated from y equals minus 1 to y equals 2 which just becomes the integral from 0 to 3 of 3z squared over 4. And that's easy, that's just z cubed over 4. So I take that from 0 to 3 and I get 27 over 4. If f is integrable over b, and E is a bounded region, we define the triple integral of F over E by the triple integral of capital F over B, where capital F is defined so that it agrees with F on E, but is zero for points in B that are outside. So this is the same way we defined double integrals over general regions, except that instead of drawing a rectangle around our domain, remember our domain is 3D now, so we just draw a box around it uh, somehow. And then if it's if that function is outside of E, we just say it's zero over there. And that way we can just integrate over the box instead. So 
we have to come up with different types of regions now because remember that when we convert dv into dx, dy, and dz, that's three different um, possible differentials. So that means there's six different ways we can arrange it. So three of those ways are for projecting down into three different planes. So if we project down into the xy plane, we'll say that that's type number one. But then after we project down into those three possible different planes, in a plane, we now have a plane region, which could be a type one or type two, as we saw. So we've got three different planes we can project into three types, uh, sorry, two types for each plane. So that's six total. So just to start, let's talk about type one. Type one is when we take our 3D region E, this is what we're integrating over, and we project downwards into the XY plane, and then we look at the region over there. So in that case, we have a function of Z on the top and a function of Z on the bottom. That's before we project, and then we project, we get a type one or type two region down there. So we're gonna call this type one, if it projects into the XY plane with a Arabic numeral, whereas we're going to use Roman numerals for the plane regions, type 1 and type 2, so that we try not to get too confused. So that means if it's type 1, we've got some function of z, sorry, some function of x and y that z equals, and then we have x, y, and our domain d. So in order to figure out how to do the rest of our triple integral, we have to figure out whether it's a type 1 or type 2 region when it gets projected down into the plane. So the first thing we do is integrate with respect to z. And then we integrate dA. It's a regular double integral after that. So to figure out which double integral it is, we project down and we look at either it's going to be 2y equals functions of x's. So then it's a type 1 plane region. In which case, first we go with respect to z. And then we go between two functions of x and y. And then because it's a type 1 region, we do y next. To between two y equals functions of x's, and then we do x last, where x just goes between constant limits, and we have a regular single variable integral. Then the other possibility is we project downwards, and instead of being a type 1 plane region, it's a type 2 plane region, Roman numeral 2. So in that case, again, we still go first with respect to z because it was type 1 in 3D, but then because it's type 2 in the plane, we go between two x equals functions of y, and then we integrate with respect to y last. So this is all assuming that we're projecting down into the xy plane. Let's uh, do an example of this. Suppose we have the triple integral of z dv, where e is the solid tetrahedron bounded by these uh, four planes. So let's try drawing our uh, region e. So we need some sort of tetrahedron, maybe something like this. We could put our axes over there. And let's see if I can draw them inside. And here's the origin, and let's see. It looks like on the bottom is e equal zero. So let's see if I can draw that. So I'm trying to draw this going underneath. And then on the side facing us is the plane z equals one minus x minus y. So plugging in uh, x and z equal to zero, I could see that this is the intercept zero, one, zero. Plugging in y and z equal to zero, this is v, one, zero, zero. And then over here, plugging in x and y, zero, I get that this would be zero, zero, one. So let's call this our region E. Remember, this is not what we're integrating, we're integrating z but we are integrating over this as our domain. So we can't even think of our triple integral as volume in this case. It's like a fourth dimensional volume. So let's see, we wanna do a type one region because we can project this down into the xy plane. So that means we'll first integrate with respect to z. We'll do a 
2z equals functions of x and y, but we have to figure out what we integrate with after, what we integrate with, with respect to after we, we finish with z. So either we do y first or x first. So in order to figure that out, let's draw the projection and see if we want to make it type 1 or type 2. So in the xy plane, we project down, and notice it's just basically a triangle over here in the xy plane. So I can draw like that. So here's 1, here's 1, 0. This is the line y equals 0 on the bottom. And then if this is equals 1 minus x minus y, we set that 1 minus x minus y equal to 0, because it's equal to 0 in the xy plane. And we get 1 is equal to uh, x plus y, or we could say y is equal to 1 minus x. So it looks like we can do this as a type 1 region. Roman numeral one, because it's a type one plane region, whereas this is a type one solid region. We could have also done this as a type two uh, plane region, but we don't really need to, and our default is usually gonna be just uh, go type one if you can, because it doesn't make a difference in this case. So we integrate from bottom to top. So we'll integrate from y equals zero to y, minus, uh, y equals one minus x. And we'll say this is our plane region D. So first let's write out E. E is the set of x, y, and z's such that because they were saying it's a type one and type one, that means that x goes between constant values because we integrate with respect to x last. Then y goes between two functions of x. So y goes from zero to one minus x as we saw in our picture. And then z goes between functions of x and y, so it looks like on the bottom z is 0, and on the top z is 1 minus x minus y, so that's what z goes from. So then we can write out our triple integral over e of z dv as the iterated integral using Fubini from 0 to 1 for x, then 0 to 1 minus x for y, and then 0 to 1 minus x minus y for z. And we integrate first with respect to z, because it's type 1, then with respect to y, because it's type 1 in the plane 2, and we get the integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x. After we do the first one, it's just z, so that's just z squared over 2. And then we will take that from z equals 0, to z equals 1 minus x minus y. So we get 1 half of our integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x, and then 1 minus x minus y squared dy dx. So that's just 1 half the integral from 0 to 1, we integrate with respect to y, and we get uh, minus 1 minus x minus y cubed over 3 from y equals 0 to y equals 1 minus x, which is just 1 6 times the integral from 0 to 1, 1 minus x cubed dx, which is 1 6 times minus 1 minus x to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 1, and that's just 1 24th. Okay, next let's do our other possibilities for our projections. If we have a solid region that instead projects onto the yz plane, then we say that it's a solid region of type Arabic numeral 2. So that means that we go between two functions of y and z. So two x equals functions of y and z. So we'll integrate with respect to x first, because we have x equals functions now. So after doing x, then we have to again see what type of region this is in the plane. It's either type 1 or type 2. So first we go with respect to x, then dA. And now we'll see how we split dA. 
So we either do it uh, if this thing is type 1, then notice we have a z equals function of y on the top and a z equals function of y on the bottom. So that means that we would integrate first with respect to x, then with respect to z, and then with respect to y. However, if this thing has a y equals function of z on the left and a y equals function of z on the right, because y is now our independent variable, so we have to consider the opposite where then y is dependent on z. In that case, you would uh, integrate first with respect to y and then z. So it all depends on which one you make the independent variable, which one you make the dependent variable. That shape that decides your order of integration after you finish with uh, your first variable. So we do the same thing for our last possible plane, which is the xz plane. We take our solid, we project into it. So that means that we have one bottom function of x and z, y equals some function of x and z, and one top function, y equals something of x and z. So that means first we integrate with respect to y, and then we have dA, which is determined by whether the plane region is type 1 or type 2. So if it's type 1, then it looks like we have z equals functions of x in the bottom and top. And if it's type 2, we have x equals functions of z in left and right. So type 1, we would go first z in the middle, and then we would do uh, x. But if we have x equals functions of z, then we do z last. We do first x, then z. So how about we do uh, another example? Let's see if we can evaluate this triple integral where E is the region bounded by the paraboloid and the plane. So how about we draw this region we're integrating over? Try drawing my paraboloid. Okay, something very roughly like this. And I'll put my c-axis over there x over here, origin, and make y poke out. Uh, actually, I don't like that. Let's make it poke out like this. Would that be good enough? Okay, so then notice this is cut off by a plane y equals 4. So this is 4 over here, cutting this thing off. And this is my paraboloid. I can call this region E. It looks like it's from, well, how about I just write y equals x squared plus z squared to define the paraboloid, and then we can see what type of region we want to make this. So how about I project down into the xy plane as we did before, see if that works. So that would make it a type 1 region. So if I project into the xy plane, that means I'm going down over here like this. It looks like I get a parabola. So I get this uh, parabola over here, and then it's cut off at 4. So here's the line y equals 4. Here's my y equals x squared. And here's the origin. So. In that case, I could write, let's call this region D, and I could call this uh, solid region E as the set of points X, Y, Z, such that, well, if I project down into the X, Y plane, that means I do Z first, so I do Z between two functions of Y and X, or X and Y. Then, over here, it looks like I've got two Y equals functions of X, so that's a type one uh, plane region. So I would go first with respect to y and then with respect to x. So since x is last, that's between our constants negative 2 and 2. Then y is between functions of x. So that's uh, x squared in the bottom and 4 in the top as we go from bottom to top. And then z is between functions of x and y. So I kind of have to split it to solve for z. So that means I could take a y minus x squared, take the square root. So on the top, I get the positive square root, and on the bottom, I get the negative square root of 1 minus x squared. So that's what z goes from. 
So that means that my triple integral over E of the uh, square root of x squared plus z squared, which we did not draw because it's in the fourth dimension, is equal to the outermost integrals for x, so negative 2 to 2. Then we go from x squared to 4. And then we go from minus the square root of y squared minus x squared to the square root of y minus x squared. I think I said y squared, I just meant y. And then we have x squared plus z squared. We go for c, then y, and then x. So that would be if we make it type 1. But notice that this is pretty horrible to integrate. It's a complete mess. So maybe we should try doing something else and see if we can come up with a better integral. We got this by projecting down into the xy plane, which made E a type 1 plane region. So how would I call this d1? Because it's the uh, projection we get from treating E as a type 1 region. And how about we try drawing E as a different type of region that's a little bit more convenient. Notice if we project into the xz plane, then we get a circle. And circles are pretty easy to integrate over if we use polar coordinates. So instead of projecting into the xy plane, how about I project into the xz plane? So I have x and z axis over here. And I'll get my circle. And notice that uh, the circle is x squared plus z squared equals 4 because we've projected from where we cut off at y equals 4. So that's the circle we get. And that means that we go from minus 2 to 2 for x. So we can call this region d3 for the region that we get by treating e as a type 3 region, where first we integrate with respect to y between two y equals functions of x and z, and then we integrate with respect to uh, z and x, depending on if we want to treat this as type 1 or type 2 region. But actually, we won't treat it as either of those in the plane, because it's a circle. It's probably easiest to just go to polar coordinates at that point. So let's rewrite e. Now we can rewrite e as a set of points x, y, and z, such that x goes between these constant values of negative 2 and 2, uh, z goes between minus the square root of 4 minus x squared, and the square root of 4 minus x squared. And that's if we want to treat this as a uh, type 1 region where we integrate first with respect to z and then x. Again, we're just going to switch to polar in a minute, but we'll still want to describe our region e like this quickly. So then last we have y going between x squared plus z squared and 4. Because it goes from x squared plus z squared and then it gets cut off at 4. Okay, so now let's uh, write our triple integral again. So our triple integral over e this time of square root of x squared plus z squared dv is now going to be the double integral over d3 of the integral from x squared plus z squared to 4 of the square root of x squared plus z squared dy and then we'll do da to take care of this integral and you might say okay well that doesn't look any better than what you had before you still have square root of x squared plus z squared and your limits are still not that great but actually it's amazing because we were integrating with respect to z last time and now we're integrating with respect to y and there are no y's over here so integrating this is super easy because this is just a constant so we can take care of that uh, really quick we can get that this is equal to the double integral over d3 of 4 minus x squared 
minus c squared times x squared plus z squared because integrating a constant is just uh, b minus a times that constant. And then that becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 of, let's see, x squared minus z squared in this case will be r. We go to polar coordinates. So this would be 4 minus r squared. And then this is the square root of r squared, which is just r. So we have an r, and then we have uh, another r because we have r dr d theta. Okay, cool. So that's just going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta because we can split our integral into functions of theta and functions of r. And then the integral from 0 to 2 of 4r squared minus r to the fourth. And we get our r squared and then distribute it. And that's dr. And that's just going to be equal to uh, 2 pi times 4r cubed over 3 minus r to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 2, which is 128 pi over 15. Let's now express the iterated integral that they gave us as a triple integral, and then we write it as an iterated integral in a different order, integrating first with respect to x, then z, and then y. Okay, so we're going to have to write that this uh, iterated integral from 0 to 1, and then 0 to x squared, and then 0 to y of f of x, y, z, dz, dy, dx. Notice they didn't even give us the function because we don't need it to change our order of integration. We only need to look at the region we're integrating over. So using Fubini, that's a triple integral over e of f of x, y, z, dv. So we have to write what e is somehow. So in order to do that, how about we look at our iterations or limits that we're looking at in the iterated integral and try to build up the projections into the x, y, y, z, and x, z planes. So if we project into the x, y plane, because notice we're first going with respect to z, so that's our natural projection as a type 1 region, then it looks like we go from 0 to x squared for y and then 0 to 1 for x. So I should get something like this. Let's see if I can draw it. Should be a nice like parabola. This is y equals x squared. And then it goes from zero to that. So it goes from the x-axis and it cuts off at one because it goes from zero to one. So this is our projection onto the x-blade plane if we treat E as a type one solid region. So that means that uh, E in this case is the set of points x, y, z such that x goes between constant 0 and 1, y goes between uh, 0 and x squared, and z goes between 0 and y. And that's basically the default that they gave us. That tells us that d1 is equal to the set of points x, y in the x, y plane such that x goes between 0 and 1, and y goes between 0 and x squared. But we want to write in a different order, where first we integrate with respect to x, and then z, and then y last. So that means that if we want to do y last, then y should be our constant limits. So let's switch the order over here and make y the uh, independent variable. So we'll have an x equals function of y, where x is the independent variable. So that means we'll have the set of points x, y, such that y goes between constant 0 and 1. And x goes from, on the left it looks like the square root of y, and on the right it looks like x equals 1. 
So we'll have a square root of y on the left and then one on the right. So we just basically converted uh, this d into uh, type two plane region. So now we're integrating with respect to y last, so that's good. We still need to get uh, z in the middle though. So we need to switch our uh, solid region a little bit. So now I think we can at least project onto the yz plane since we know that y goes between constant zero and one. So we could see that uh, z goes between zero and y. So we could write d2 equal to the xy's such that y goes between zero and one and z goes between 0 and y. We basically jumped from here and here into this projection into the yz plane. So that'll look like this where we have y and z. And since we're going from 0 to z equals y, z equals y is just this line, straight line, and on the bottom we have z equals 0. And that means that y goes between 0 and 1, so this is 1 and this is 0, and we can call this d2. Last but not least, how about we write the last projection into the xz plane? So in the xz plane, we want uh, z to be our dependent variable and x to be our independent variable, so that means that x goes between 0 and 1, and z goes from 0 to x squared. Because, remember, z is going from 0 to y, and y is going from 0 to x squared. So that means that we get uh, something like this in the xz plane. Now I'll draw it a little bit higher. So here's x. Here's a z, and here's my parabola we call a z equals x squared. So it's z equals x squared, and we can call this region d3, our projection to the xz plane, goes from 0 to 1. So this means that we could combine all of these to figure out what our solid region looks like in 3D. See if we can draw that. Okay, so that's my, my x axis, let's say, and then this thing kind of hugs it over there. Goes up like that, and down over there, and like that, and curves like that. Okay, so then I need to put in the z axis and a y-axis. So let's say there's my y-axis. And here's one. So it looks like this is the plane z equals y, which we get from pulling back our projection from the y-z plane, and then over here is x equals 1. We can see from, from projecting into the xz plane and not fit to make my x-axis. And let's do our little parabola from the back. We can't really see it so well, but it's there. And that's y equals x squared. That's uh, the projection into the xy plane. So that means that we can write our region E as the set of points x, y, z such that uh, y is between constant values because we want to do y first, so that's between 0 and 1. We want z to be next, so z should just be a function of the first variable that we got, so that's just from 0 to y. And then we want uh, x to be between functions of y and z, 
But notice that's just going to be square root of y and 1 because of the way this worked out. I'll put too many less than or equals. This should have been a comma. So we square root of y less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. So we've redone our region so that first we go to y and then we go to z and then uh, x. So when we integrate, first we'll do x and then we'll do z and then we'll do y. So that means our triple integral over e of f of x, y, z, dv is equal to the iterated integral from 0 to 1, 0 to y, square root of y to 1, of f of x, y, z, first x, then z, and then y. So this is where what we get when we project into the yz plane. So we basically just convert it into a type 2 uh, solid region. Next, similar to the way that we could use a double integral to find area, even though we usually use them to find volume, we can use a triple integral to find volume, even though we don't even usually use it to find that because we have some four-dimensional thing. So what we do is we just integrate 1, and then we get the uh, volume. So in order to do an example, how about we try drawing the thing that we want to take the volume of. So remember, we already did this in section 15.2. It was uh, example 4. So I'll just try redrawing it. This tetrahedron-like thing, let's see. It's like something like this. So here's my x-axis, here's my z-axis, and I'll draw a y-axis. Uh, say something like this, and have some region like here. And then this is my plane x plus 2y plus z equals 2. This is my plane x equals 2y. And I can call this triangle t, or tetrahedron t, not triangle. By plugging in 0 for x and z, I get 1 for y, so that's my y-intercept. My z-intercept is similarly 0, 0, 2. And then these guys intersect each other when I plug in x equals 2y. So I plug in z equals 0 because I'm over here in x, y plane z equals 0. So that tells me y is a half, and I get x is 1. So that's my point 1 half 0. Then in the x, y plane, when we project down, we get this triangular region, which is this region over here. So that's at the point 1 half, where z is 0. And I can describe the top uh, equation as this guy. So I set z equal to 0 and solve for y. I get y equals 1 minus x over 2. And the bottom, I get y equals x over 2. So this will be a type 1 plane region where we integrate from bottom to top, because why not? And I'll name it uh, D, because we usually just use D for our planar regions. So that means that the volume of my tetrahedron is the triple integral over T of 1 dV which is the iterated integral from 0 to 1 for uh, x, because we do that last, because we're doing type 1 in both cases. And then we'll go to y. So y goes between two functions of x, x over 2 and 1 minus x over 2. And then z goes from 0 to 2 minus x minus 2y. Just solve for z. 
and I have to write first z, then y, and then x. So then we do our first integral with respect to z, just one, so let's just get this plugged in because this is zero. So I get integral from zero to one, integral from x over two to one minus x over two of two minus x minus two y dy dx, which is the same integral that we evaluated in example four in section 15.2. So we already saw that it's one third. So I don't need to rewrite that calculation. Next up, some applications of triple integrals. If the density function of a solid object that occupies the region E is rho of x, y, z in units of mass per unit volume at any given point x, y, z, then its mass is the triple integral of rho. And its moments about three coordinate planes are exactly what you would think. To get the yz moment, you multiply by x, your distance from yz. To get the xz moment, you multiply by y and integrate, and then from xy, you multiply by z and integrate. So then your center of mass is located at the point x bar, y bar, z bar, where you take your yz moment divided by your total mass, xz moment divided by total mass for y bar, and then xy moment divided by total mass for z bar. If your density is constant, so constant rho, then the center of mass of the solid is called the centroid. And the moments of inertia about the three coordinate axes are ix, iy, and iz, where ix is y squared plus z squared, and then you integrate x squared plus z squared times rho and integrate, and x squared plus y squared times rho and integrate. So pretty similar to what we saw in uh, double integrals, we just extend the definition a little bit to accommodate for our extra variable. Then the total electric charge is where you triple integrate. Instead of rho, you just do sigma for the uh, charge density. We can also do triple integrals for probability, where we have continuous random variables x, y, and z now. So they have also a joint density function. And that's just the, uh, gives us the probability that x, y, z lies in the region E as the triple integral over uh, E of our joint density function f. So that means we can get the probability that x is between a and b, y is between c and d, and c is between r and s as an iterated integral with those limits. And then of course the joint density function is always greater than or equal to zero and its integral over everywhere always adds it to one because the probabilities of anything have to be positive and add up to one. So how about we find the center of mass of a solid of constant density that is bounded by the parabolic cylinder x equals y squared and a bunch of planes. So how about I try drawing what happens when we take this cylinder x equals y squared and we cut it off on the top and bottom. So we kind of get like, let's see if I can do it. Hmm. something like this, and then we're supposed to, like, come around like that, and then wrap around over here. So it was a cylinder, but then it got sliced at the top and sliced at the bottom. So we just get like this wedge kind of thing. And then this is the z-axis, and then this is the y-axis, and let's see if I can do the x-axis. Mm, roughly. So that's at 1, because x is equal to 1, cutting it off over there, and this we can call our region E, where the top plane slicing is z equals x. So that means that our region E is the set of points x, y, z such that, uh, how about we have y go between constant values, minus one and one, because we can 
project as a uh, type 1 region into the xy plane and then it looks like it's easy to let y go between or x go between functions of y because notice we have x equals y squared so we already have it solved for x so first we project down into the xy plane so first we integrate with respect to z as two functions of x and y then in the xy plane we'll do a type 2 region where we integrate from x equals functions of y and then constant values of y. So y goes between constant values of minus 1 and 1. Maybe this is a little bit easier if I actually draw it for you. So here it is in the xy plane. If we project down, we get a parabola. So it looks like this. And then here's y, here's x, here's 0, and then here's x equals 1. So on the left we have x equals y squared. So this is our region D, and as you can see we do integrate from left to right because that's the easiest. Because we've got an x equals function on the left and an x equals function on the right, solving for y would be kind of pointless. And then, yeah, you can see that y goes from minus 1 to 1. So we have x going from y squared on the left to 1 on the right. And then last are z. It looks like z on the bottom is 0, and then z on the top is x. So z goes from 0 to x. We said we have constant density. So that means that our function rho of x, y, z is some constant. How about we name that constant rho, too? So that means our mass is the triple integral over E of the constant rho dv, which is the iterate integral from minus 1 to 1, then y squared to 1, then 0 to x of rho dz dx dy and that's row I could take out because it's constant times the integral from minus 1 to 1 y squared to 1 integrating 1 from 0 to x is just x because respect to z and plug in x after and then we've got dx and dy so that's just row times the integral from minus 1 to 1 of x squared over 2 from x equals y squared to x equals 1 dy, which is rho over 2 times the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 minus y to the fourth dy which is rho times the integral from 0 to 1 of, uh, oh sorry, I can just go straight to, I think I can just integrate 1 and get y, and then this is just y to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1, so that's just 4 rho over 5. Okay, so that's my total mass. How about I get my moments now? It's because I want my center of mass. I have to divide it. So if I get the moment about the xz plane, then that's y bar. But notice that the x-axis completely cuts through. So that means that my solid is symmetric about the xz plane. The xz plane basically slices it in half. But also notice that we're just integrating over rho, which is constant. So because my density function and my solid are constant about the xz plane, that means that the moment about the xz plane is zero by symmetry. So that means that our y bar is zero, because it's just zero divided by our mass. So we'll have to get our moment about the yz plane. And that's the triple integral over e of x times rho dv, 
which is the iterate integral from minus 1 to 1, y squared to 1, 0 to x, x times rho times dz dx dy, which is the, which would we'll take out rho again, so rho times the integral minus 1 to 1, y squared to 1, x squared dx dy, and that's rho times the integral from minus 1 to 1, x cubed over 3 from x equals y squared to x equals 1 dy, which is 2 rho over 3 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus y to the 6 dy, and that's 2 rho over 3 times y minus y to the 7th over 7 from 0 to 1, which is 4 rho over 7. Okay, last but not least, we have to get our xy moment. So the xy moment is the triple integral over e of z times rho dv. So that's the integral minus 1 to 1, y squared to 1, 0 to x, z times rho dz dx dy. And that's uh, rho times the integral from minus 1 to 1, y squared to 1 of z squared over 2 from z equals 0 to z equals x dx dy, which is rho over 2, integral minus 1 to 1, integral y squared to 1 of x squared dx dy, and that's just rho over 3 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus y to the 6 dy, which is 2 rho over 7. So that means that our center of mass x bar, y bar, z bar, which is equal to our y z moment over m, our x z moment over m, and our xy moment over m is just 5 sevenths, 0, 5 fourteenths, because the row cancels when we divide.